Hey Trooper Stars, Dave Schmidt here, and today I'm going to show you how to make killer nachos. Now I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I also like to call these the perfect nachos. Alright, so the perfect nachos. What's the plan? What do you put in them? How do you make killer nachos? Well, I've learned over the years that uh, there's all kinds of things you can put into nachos. But really, it comes down to the technique. And it's very important that you follow this technique to the letter. So like I've said, there's all sorts of things you can put into nachos. Meat, peppers, better cheeses. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to link down below to a great cookbook that has all kinds of snack ideas and uh, I'll allow you to explore that yourself. Ah uh, yes, the bowl. You certainly couldn't make a good bowl of nachos without a perfect bowl like this. Now of course you don't need this exact bowl, um, but a glass bowl or a ceramic bowl of some sort, in my opinion, is best. And you'll see why later. The chips. I like getting these kind of corn nacho chips we see here. Um, I just find they're inexpensive and delicious and one thing we haven't really talked about the technique is that everything needs to be perfect. And see how this guy right here, he's kind of broken? He goes right in the garbage. You want every single chip to be perfectly round. The cheese. I always use cheddar cheese, old cheddar cheese. The older the better in a lot of ways. Um, but you can certainly do it to your taste. And you want to grate it, you don't want to get bad crap. Because if you get bad crap, you're going to be eating crap. And it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be killer. Now turn that cheese into grated cheese. I'll just kind of fast forward this. You don't need to see this. There we go. Nice and shredded. Just how you want it. Alright, I've alluded to it a few times. We've talked about technique. And if you want the perfect nachos, if you want to learn how to make killer nachos, you need perfection. You have to be a perfectionist. My buddies, they always bug me about how I make these things. But they never complain about them when they're stuffing their faces. What you need to do is slowly, methodically, place each and every chip into the plate. Once you have your chip layer down, you need to just as slowly, just as perfectly, make sure each chip gets the perfect amount of cheese. I don't like them to be absolutely covered in cheese, but as you can see, a generous amount. Now you can get a little faster with this, but if you just kind of sprinkle it on, you're going to waste cheese on the bowl, some aren't going to be covered, some nachos might not even have any cheese on them, it's a disaster. And you see something like this? Garbage. You don't want this. No one wants this, so big of a chip. They want nice, big, fat, circular chips that are perfectly covered in cheese. The perfect nacho. So there we go, another another nacho layer. Gonna be a little quicker this time. But it's important that each chip gets a good amount. Alright, now if you get a chip about this big with a big hole in it, you can kind of use it to cover up in spots like that. You don't want too much less than this. This is even one that you might consider getting rid of if you have a lot of good chips. Now, you'll notice that I'm using just cheese. I'm not putting peppers or meat, onions, tomatoes, jalapenos. You can certainly put those things. This is the technique for killer nachos. You need to do it perfectly. If you put those other things in, that's just fine, but you need to apply the same amount of care you need to make sure that each chip has the perfect amount of those ingredients added on. Just to get it perfect. Now once you're done layering and you have nachos like this, these aren't nachos yet, they're just chips with cheese on them. Albeit laid perfectly. What you need to do is microwave this. And that may surprise some of you, but I've found that it's quick, it melts the cheese which is what you want, and there's not any chance of burning or singeing the chips. You could certainly cook it in the, or in the oven, rather, if that's what you like to do. And that would probably be better if you have other ingredients. But I find for just chips and nachos, the microwave works great. On my particular unit, it's 40 seconds on high, they come out perfectly. 
but you might have to experiment a bit and that's all part of making the perfect nachos. There you go, perfectly melted, ready to dip in salsa or sour cream or guacamole, which is a whole separate video. You can see that some of the individual strands of cheese aren't quite melted. Um, this is a smaller batch, so I was trying 35 seconds, but anyways, you can play around with it. Usually you wanna make a full bowl, 40 seconds perfect. Either way, like I say, that the, the point of all this is to do it very methodically and very precisely to get each chip to be perfect. All right, everyone. That's how you make the perfect nacho. These will go over well. Of course, you might want to eat them all yourself. So, let me know what you think. No doubt you have your own ways of making nachos and uh, maybe some tips and tricks. Let me know down in the comments. Do you have any other snack food that you rely on when uh, you get the itch to eat? Feel free to thumb this video if you liked it. If you didn't, uh, thumb it down. That's fine too. Subscribe and ring that bell.